Sheila Ji, there's been a conscious effort by our government to do social welfare schemes. And one of the most successful ones is the Bharti scheme. Can you elaborate a little bit on it? Well, you know, Delhi was having a very bad girl-boy ratio. We were 80, 880 girls to a boy. And uh, that uh, was uh, something very frightening for a city like Delhi to have. So what uh, I thought and I thought, then suddenly it came in a flash that, all right, let's have a scheme where we encourage the girl child to go to school uh, and also give their parents um, money at the end of her class 12 which is one lakh rupees. So she's first guest register, goes into school, does her 12th class and then gets one lakh. Then it's for the parents and her to decide what they do. Now, this scheme had such an electrifying effect that the 880 registrations which used to take place of girls became 1,004 to 100 boys. Now, that was uh, just amazing. I couldn't believe it. But uh, it did have an electrifying effect. People started sending their girls, getting them registered. Because even there was even this uh, casual uh, attitude, what's the use of having a girl registered? Or she'll get married and she'll go away. So education came around, registration came around, and the ratio suddenly changed. So it's a very popular and a very successful scheme, we give it to parents who earn uh, 1 lakh rupees a year. And so it covers a large amount of people and there you are. And I, I think uh, the other aspect of your social welfare scheme also is connected with education for the... Yes. Classes. No, it was. You won't get it if you don't educate your child because the it is... Uh, Mm, uh, dependent on your 12th class certificate. But the day you pass your 12th class, you will get it. Otherwise, no. Uh, you know, a, 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 a subsidiary question to this would be on the entire educational structure. There has been an effort by your government to kind of, you know, improve education in the government schools. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Uh, this also we started about five, six years ago. And we discovered, uh, to our own surprise, that what the government spent per child in a school, government school, was 900 rupees a month. All the public schools, the maximum they spent was 800 rupees, and it was all free education. So we thought that there was something terribly wrong with the input that we are giving and the output that we were getting. So we started having trainings for the teachers so that, you know, they become a little more uh, uh, savvy. And also attendance. You know, otherwise the normal thing was school teachers, you, you know, one o'clock the school is supposed to open, the principal doesn't arrive till two or three, sometimes she does not arrive and all that. So we set up what we call the um, Vidyarthi Kalyan Samitis, which are about six or five members of the neighborhood, eminent citizens, the MLA and the principals chose them. So these Kalyan Samitis were then given money, I think it's now become about over a lakh of rupees, to maintain the school, the toilets, the window breaking, and to see that the children come to school, they get their free books, they get their free uniform, and they get the uh, education classes on time and so on. That made a tremendous discipline. And the, because when you combine largely, and this thing pattern we followed in the government schools, uh, this brought the girls also, many more girls into school. The result has been uh, that um, today we can boast that 0.01% the result of government schools are better than the public schools. So, you know, from a me meager 37% which we used to have seven years ago, it's now 89% in the 12th class and, uh, no, 87% in the 12th class and 89% uh, in the t uh, 10th class. So, you know, things changed a lot. Uh, what I believe in uh, is that you just have to invoke a latent feeling inside people. Otherwise, you know, people tend to get, especially the, the very ordinary people, you know, 
whom we call the Aam Admi, there is no ignition of their aspirations. Once you ignite that and you find these government schools, girls coming, boys coming and uh, feel proud that yes, we today we are better than the um, public schools or as good if not better. Uh, but we need to improve more and I think a holistic personality has to be built up in our schools. So that is... Uh, and then the other area of course with social welfare is the medical. That's medical, of course, we are giving uh, to the below poverty line families uh, insurance cover of 30,000 rupees a year. So that is, is already on, online and is w working well. Uh, then we've also got various campaigns. Polio was one which has been going on for many years. Then we start, uh, TB was another one and now you find very, very few cases of TB, what we call the DOT program, you know, in every dispensary. We've just started an anti-diabetic or a prevention of diabetic, understanding of diabetes because a lot of people are suffering from diabetes. So every hospital and every dispensary has what we call a diabetic uh, clinic to which anybody can go and they are given medicines, they are also given education on what they should do and what they should not do. Now we are also starting um, uh, Stri Shakti counters which means the women's counters where the women can go and you know get their blood pressure checked, blood checked and medicines which are given normally to the hospital but specifically for women that clinic will be there so if she's uh, you know suffering from something uh, which is particular to a woman pains this that the other so we've done that also and I do hope uh, that we will be able to more uh, open more dispensaries we already about 300 including Yunani and Ayurvedic dispensaries those also are being covered by this. We want more and more people to come to dispensaries rather than go to the big hospitals. So our hospitals are very well equipped with CT scan or any other um, you, uh, you know, machines which you require, diagnostics, uh, the state of the art, all our hospitals. And we've got in the government today about 42 hospitals which serve like this. So I think the health sector, uh, we can pat ourselves. And, and what about uh, you know the sort of future plans for this? I mean, are there expansion plans to incorporate uh, you know portion of the population? Is awareness. See, I tell you, we have about uh, eighty or ninety, eight, eighty-six or so, what we call the gender resource centers, where women come of the neighborhood. They are run by. Uh, uh, organizations, NGOs, then we have two mother NGOs who look after, see that the work is. There we are training women in some skill or art, it could be beauty course, it could be embroidery, etc. And uh, some sort of uh, familiarity with the computer. And they come there, do their work, and then are able to serve the neighborhood. You know, for instance, stitching is something which I find if they are good enough, everybody needs to stitch, have a blouse stitched or a salwar kurta stitched or a, a kurta stitched or something. So they serve a population of about 60,000 or 80,000 around them. So they pick up jobs there on their own. Then we also, the beauty, the beauty co beautician courses are very good. So that's, a, then we give them health also. Now these centers are really awareness centers. Okay, look, don't do, uh, keep yourself healthy, cooking is done there, you know, all, the, so it's a kind of a holistic approach to have these gender resource centers, which again we call the Sri Shakti centers. Then we've got the Samajik Suvida Kendra, where the uh, people can go and get all their entitlements. Rather than going from one department, I'm entitled to a um, pension of 1,000 rupees, let me go there. I'm entitled to... Uh, uh, relief because I'm handicapped or measured. So all the 57, 87 odd uh, 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 social welfare schemes, many of them were not even known to people. They've all been brought in under these Samajik Subhida Kendra where the people go 
एंड से कि भाई दिस इज़ माई इंटाइटल मैं हॉस्पिटल कहाँ जाऊँ मुझे इंश्योरेंस कैसे लेनी है ऑल दैट सो नाउ दीज हैव बिन वेरी गुड ऑल्सो वी गॉट अबाउट एटी ऑफ दैम ऑलरेडी एंड वी नीड टू एक्सपैंड द मोर देन वी हैव फॉर यू कन्वीनियंस ऑफ सिटीजन लाइक यू द जीवन केंद्र वी गॉट अबाउट नाइन्टी और हंड्रेड ऑलरेडी दीज जीवन केंद्र अब वे यू मे कॉल योर पेमेंट्स यू डोंट हैव गो टू द वॉटर बॉडी टू पे योर वॉटर बिल यू डोंट हैव टू गो टू द बैंक टू टेक आउट योर मनी यू डोंट हैव टू गो टू द डी टी सी टू गेट योर पास यू डोंट हैव टू गो टू पे योर इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बिल सो अबाउट अबाउट थर्टी सेवन थर्टी एट सर्विसज आर बींग प्रोवाइडेड देर वे पीपल गो एंड Yes, 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 yes. So one, yes, it is a one-stop shop using IT, which many people do not have in their homes. And those people who can use it, they can do their payments online, their house tax, their land revenue, so on and so forth. Uh, one of the things that, of course, you have major challenge for a city like Delhi is water. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what your plans are in that area? Um, water is really a challenge, but so was power about eight years, ten years ago. We caught that, and now power is okay. No, nearly okay. Now, this is what we plan to do with water. We tried about six years ago to see that if we could bring in the distribution of water to a private partnership, there was a huge cry about it. We had a World Bank study done, so I said, "All right, people are not ready for this, so let's not do it." We didn't do it. Water is a huge challenge because distribution is bad. Leakages are 42 to 45 percent. You know, water just gets leaked out. People do not pay their bills. Now we've started a system of collection of bills, and you know, give your areas, get a meter installed. Unfortunately, not enough meters of uh, uh, water are available, but we are doing so. We keep on extending the date, but now more and more people are coming into the net of putting meters. Then also mm, Yamuna, very uh, closely connected with water. Uh, we are going to start something called the interceptor system, where we intercept all the muck that goes from the city. into the yamuna a study has been done by the engineers in delhi limited the government of india cabinet has approved of it and the whatever are the expert committees they have they have approved of it so we are going to start that very shortly so that the water that goes into the yamuna is treated water so that you know the yamuna does not get uh, you know pure unpurified because of the muck that comes in from the city but i must admit to you that water is a challenge we have enough of it and you'd be surprised to know that if you look at the per capita consumption of water it's one of the highest in the world and yet people cry for water then there's a mafia which works in water you know because water is something and all that i can say is satisfaction is that there's nobody who remains without water it may be less it may be more but it's not that and if we were to begin to conserve which we carry on a ca- campaign i don't think in the next 4 3 4 years water will remain the kind of problem that it is today uh, for conservation and since the ground water is being uh, taken out everybody who has a big house has a uh, tube well there uh we have this water harvesting scheme all the big buildings that is hotels and government offices and hospitals and all are mandated even the houses are mandated to have water harvesting which means the water goes down back into the earth but i this needs a little more push because people haven't yet got used to this because you are getting water till you get to a point where you know this becomes you know it uh, invites your own voluntary effort okay, there be my i must do it otherwise i'll be without water that's what you are trying to work there has been a lot of success but not fully the big um, buildings are doing it but uh, the water level is going down rapidly and we need to sit we go on telling people we also give an incentive 
you know, sometimes it rates from 50,000 to a lakh of rupees depending on the, uh, you know, for instance, the uh, housing complexes where they have 200 households and all. We give them more so that they can take out more, they can contribute something. So all that is being done, but um, we haven't reached, reached the satisfaction level as yet. And it's, it's part of your Bhagidari scheme in any case? Yes, it's part of our Bhagidari. Everything is part of our Bhagidari. Whatever we do, uh, we consult resident welfare associations, NGOs and all. We are going, if you want, we are going to have a clean camp, Delhi campaign for a whole week where we want NGOs to get into it and say, please clean up, stop using plastic bags because plastic bags are a hazard for these uh, drains. They choke them and for animals who uh, eat that. So uh, there are these campaigns. If you remember, our anti-cracker campaign has been very successful. We involve children in our eco clubs to, uh, to make them aware so that before you can think about it, the child has become an adult. So it's an adult who is a better, aware, socially more conscious adult. Coming up Commonwealth Games, there is now, of course, all these infrastructure that's being built up. And one of the areas is the sports infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a little about what your government is doing in, in that direction? Well, our government, totally on our own, were given two stadia to be made. One is the Chhatrasal in uh, northwest Delhi, and the other was in South Delhi, Tyagraj. Tyagraj was built from scratch. Now that is about the greenest stadium in the world today. That's something which the Commonwealth Federation has told us. There's no stadium which is as green a building as this is, where we put insulated walls, where we, the power is being generated you know, through, uh, through solar energy and then put into the grid and then taken back. Uh, the material used is all eco-friendly, so um, uh, energy is conserved power is conserved and water is conserved. Uh, so that's a state of the art. The Chhatras will be upgraded. But I must tell you that all told about 15 uh, stadia are being built all over. The DDA is building some, Sports Authority of India is building some, the university built one, two have come up there. They've all been upgraded keeping the word green in mind. That you know whether you use CFL bulbs or LED bulbs now, uh, all that has been done. So conservation, nature friendly, environment friendly, and really state of the art. Uh, when you go to the games, I'm sure you're going to feel very happy. So you basically, you, you, you know, you're seeing a changing face of Delhi now. Mm -hmm. you know, you're seeing infrastructure coming up, you're seeing all the stadia coming up, roads, airports, linkages. You know. Can you sort of give your vision of what you see as the future Delhi. The future of Delhi, uh, of course, the first is that, you know, it should be a, a world-class city comparable to all the other world-class cities that, are, that you think of, whether it's Tokyo or Bangkok or London or New York or Washington, whatever. So make it a first-rate city. But to my mind, above all, it should be a humane city, a sensitive city, and a smiling city. So that's really my future. That you know, everybody, whoever he may be, the poorest to the richest who live here, uh, have a sense of uh, belonging to the city, pride in their city, and also to feel that something is being done for everybody. That's my, my vision of a really world-class city. You know, you have uh, over the years built up gardens like uh, you know, yes. the Garden of Five Senses, mm -hmm. the Guru Tegh Bahadur Memorial. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the, the philosophy behind it? I mean, what, what is it in this, these... Uh... Now, uh, the Garden of Five Senses was built on a dump yard. It just, you know, everything was dumped there. And today it's a wonderful garden we can think of. It was called five senses because you take all the five senses there. The, when the wind passes by, there are little sculptures which ring around. And stone is used, all the plants, the herbs. And uh, there's peace and there's tranquility. And there's food to taste your, I mean, uh, cater to your taste buds. 
So it's a garden which is quite unique. Uh, then Guru Tegh Bahadur, which you spoke of the memorial. Guru Tegh Bahadur is the icon for Delhi. I don't think there's been anybody else who sacrificed so much, sacrificed his own life, his children's life. So Delhi is, if it's connected to somebody with sacrifice and patriotism and the desire to save and fight the enemy, it is Guru Tegh Bahadur. Sis Ganj is there, Rakab Ganj is there, um, and all the others. So we thought that we should build a memorial to him. And that has been built again on land which was really wasteland. Nobody was using it, nothing could be used. All that it would have happened would be, it would have been encroached upon. So as you enter Delhi, in the Sindhu border from Punjab and Haryana, there is this beautiful memorial and um, it's uh, functioning now. It has to be formally opened and dedicated to the nation that we're waiting for some VIP to come and do it for us. But uh, it's there, it's all ready. It's got all the, it's got a very modern uh, look. It's got a little canteen, a food court, small one, very small so that people. Then it's got the, the writings of the gurus all around. It's got huge plaques. I do hope you can go there sometime and uh, film it up. The plaques of the gurus in Hindi, in English, and of course in Gurumukhi. So I, I think it's a, it's a very modern, it's got that huge Nishan Sab, but not a Nishan Sab as in a religious thing. It's just a pillar at the center. And I do hope that that will be a lasting contribution. Like you think of Baha'i Temple or you think of other things, Akshadham and all. This would be to the Guru. One last thing. How would you define Delhi? What is your idea of Delhi and your definition? How do you define India? You see, it defies a single uh, sentence or a single definition. Because Delhi represents all of India. We have people from the south. I think those people who thought they were Delhi Wallas have really got submerged. I'm one of them. We've got submerged because we've got so much of culture coming in, the Keralite culture, the Northeast culture, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, even Haryana. So you see, it's, it's indefinable, except that I would like to see that everybody lives here in peace and contentment and finds that this is their city, even if they've come all the way from um, Calicut or um, Trichnapalli or whatever it is. This is the city which represents the India. So it's beyond definition. I don't think you can define India. If the one word used very commonly is uni uh, unity and diversity. So that is what Delhi would be also.